Uh, so yeah, um, like you said, my name is John, and I have a small farm in Connecticut. Uh, a really brief version of my background so you know who is talking to you. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut, went to the University of Connecticut for uh, entertainment and theater. Uh, moved to New York City for four years where I worked in television and as a food photographer. Uh, my wife Kate and I rode our bikes uh, across the country 5,500 miles visiting family farms, interviewing farmers along the way. Uh, worked on a 200 member vegetable CSA and grass fed beef farm last year and starting a farm and a family this year. Uh, we have a daughter due in July. Uh, and I tell everybody that I meet because I'm really excited. <clears throat> um, I found through my, my journeys and my travels uh, and in my starting a farm from scratch right now that by far and away photography was the best way to communicate with people. You know, I say a picture is worth a thousand words and I think that's absolutely true. Uh, the other thing about pictures is now that everything's digital is they find their way everywhere. Uh, it's easy to send them from my phone, it's easy to put them up online, uh, and there's just there's so many uses uh, that I, I could go on and on and that's what I'll do for the next 50 minutes. Uh, so necessary equipment. Uh, everybody has in general some way to take photographs nowadays uh, and the I, I want to say that with all the photos that everybody sent me, I got a landslide. I think I was up to 38 uh, photographs sent in as of this morning. Uh, and they're all really great. Uh, one of the reasons why they're really great is because you took the time to take the photograph. Um, you can only regret the photos that you don't take. Um, so everyone nowadays is moving towards having a smartphone. This phone has an 8 megapixel camera on it. It takes really high quality photos. Uh, I can take a photo and upload it to Instagram and I've set it up where it automatically updates my website and Facebook and it's just one picture, I hit go and it's all set but I get a lot of feedback from customers, CSA members who have signed up because of that. The other one for on farm, uh, I, don't, I have a, a large DSLR camera, a big body camera with interchangeable lenses but on a farm that's impractical or on a farm visit that's not always practical if you're you know, working with your hands a lot. So I never leave home without this. And it's a simple point and shoot camera that sits right next to my Leatherman behind me. If I'm working on the farm, I just unzipper it and there's my camera. This also does HD video and takes really good photographs. <clears throat> the difference between having one of these and a phone, that phone is also my GPS. It's a computer. Uh, I play Minesweeper on it or you know whatever. And this is just a camera, so you're going to get a higher quality photo out of this. Um, but it'll take a little bit more time to put it up online. Uh, so when you want to take a photograph, uh, there's a guy online, uh, Ken Rockwell, who has KenRockwell.com. And he says, before you take a photograph, you fart. Uh, and that's feel, ask, refine, and take. And we'll go into, into what those are. So feel is walking around a farm, whether you're on a farm visit or out and about, and you know, photography is an art. And you're, you're the artist creating the art, uh, for sure. That's why people build their entire career around it. So you want to feel what exactly uh, it is that makes you want to take a photograph of that situation, whether it's uh, a calf playing in the field or you know, a beautiful flower or whatever it happens to be. Next is to ask yourself, why exactly that photo is interesting to you? Why would you want to take a picture of that? Why do you feel it's worthwhile to share it with other people? And analyze that. Um, in the beginning, spend some time. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to cover right now is basic, um, but it really, it's you know, building those building blocks for taking really good photographs. So analyze what makes that uh, situation interesting, uh, and it'll become second nature. Uh, at first, really spend some time with it, and at this point, me, I'm like, oh, that looks great. This is why it looks great. This is my camera settings. And that all runs through really quick. I snap a photo, and then I'm on to go chase something else down, because farmers are pretty strapped for time, uh, always. Um, refining. <clears throat> so if you have, uh, and we'll have some really good examples of this on the, the photographs that you guys sent in, where you have a, something going on, whether it's a soil test or um, something happening at the farm where there's one piece of the information that's really interesting and that's what you want to cover but there's a lot of other noise going on so figuring out whether it's changing your angle or doing something differently um, 
seeing where the light is to make that the focus of the picture. So if you have a group of people, but one little girl is holding a chicken, you don't want a picture of a group of people that you have to look around for the girl holding the chicken. You want to get up and close and personal and take that picture of the girl holding the chicken or chick or whatever it is. Uh, and this is the easy one, take. Uh, and that's you know just snapping the photograph. And because everything is digital nowadays, uh, especially starting out, take a few photographs. It's not, you know, gone are the days of film cameras where you not completely gone. I get sour looks from people uh, when I say that. I, I started on film and I, I'll never go back just because I take thousands and thousands of photographs. Um, but take a couple photos and figure out when you're sitting down later at your computer which one is the best and what makes it the best and you'll have that knowledge when you're going forward. Um, the more used to taking photographs you get, the less you'll take um, just because you'll, you'll get better and you won't have to take 30 pictures of one sunset just to get one. You'll know that it's okay, it's a sunset. I can take three photos. <clears throat> uh, so three things you can concentrate now uh, and we'll, again, we'll go over this in the this photos that you sent in to me. Uh, that you can do on any camera, it doesn't matter if it's a really high quality camera, if it's your cell phone. Um, looking at the framing of your picture, the interest uh, in changing your perspective, and the lighting. Um, as I said, I worked in television and my expertise was in lighting, uh, so that's something really near and dear to me. Uh, you can do a lot with lighting and being aware of where ambient light is, where the sun is, and how people's faces are facing that. Uh, so the first one is framing. Uh, one of my pet peeves, uh, my dad is real, really bad with this, is when he takes a picture of a person, their head is right here. And you have about nine feet of head space above them. Um, <clears throat> or put it, always putting things directly in the center. Uh, it, this all varies with you know, what you feel is right and what you like, and it's, it's situational to the picture. Um, but I follow the rule of thirds as a general guideline. And that's taking your picture and slicing it two ways here and two ways here so you have nine quadrants and putting the interest of your photograph in one of those intersections uh, or along one of those lines. Uh, you could frame this up a little bit differently and put his eyes here. Um, this worked out with this photograph. Uh, you know, this is a farmer in Maine. <clears throat> where he's in focus, the background's out of focus, but you can tell there's a greenhouse here. It's a, it's a nice portrait shot, and it's weighted over to the left or the right, depending on which way you're facing. Uh, and it makes you know, the picture a little bit more interesting. Uh, then the other thing to, to be aware of, uh, well, I guess so that'll go into interest. Not every picture you take is gonna be Pulitzer Prize winning, the best picture ever. Um, but the point is that you're taking the pictures and you're telling those stories better. Um, because you want to convey what message that is. And this is just you know, a simple hay rake. Uh, this is a farm, uh, the Hortensi family farm in New York, where if I was standing, I'm five foot 10, and I walk around at five foot 10, and that's how I see my life. And anybody who's around my height or your height uh, sees life that way as well. But because the sun was over here, and th you know, this is only this high, I got down on my knees, with the sun and it was wet grass and it, you know anything for a photograph and took that picture from a different perspective and because I'm not just looking at a generic look um, piece of attractor equipment I'm looking at it from a different way it becomes more interesting for people so as you're taking photographs think of you know I see you see life from this angle all the time and everybody else does as well so if you lay down on the ground or if you can get up on a ladder um, one of the ones in my slideshow I um, there was a farm in New Jersey, and I saw these airplanes keep going over. And I was like, is there a, an airport nearby? And she's like, yeah, sure. So I called them up and got in a little Cessna and hung out the window and took a picture of some aerial photographs of their farm that I was able to give them uh, on one of my trips. And it just you know, blew her mind that she had never seen her farm quite that way before. Uh, so always have it in your mind as you're running around, what is another way I can take that photograph that makes it more interesting? Um, one of those is definitely get up closer than you, you think you need to be um, because that real close-up shot, everybody can look at a beat, uh, but when you look at a beat really close up, you get the details of the little roots and uh, the dirt on it, and it, again, makes for better, telling better stories. Uh, and lighting. Uh, lighting is the, the first thing is that I want to 
bring up is the golden hour, uh, if whether or not you've heard of this. And that's the beginning of the day and the end of the day, sunrise and sunset. The sun is glancing, uh, it's pouring through all the nice pollution uh, that we've created to create beautiful sunsets and pictures. Um, <clears throat> and if you've ever been working out on a farm and you get to the end of the day and you're tired and you notice that the sun is starting to go down and everything turns this brilliant gold color, uh, and that's the sun rays glancing in uh, and sculpting things with light. And if you're at the right angle, man, is it, it's gorgeous. And that's what you want to capture. It's some of those best, the best photographs you'll take at the beginning and the end of the day. And uh, as a photographer, I spent a lot of time waking up pre-dawn and staying up late editing photos just to get that right moment. Uh, it's not always just, you know, the, the, well, it is the right time of day for this. Um, one of the, it's with, in regards to lighting, uh, as I stumble over this, um, sunlight during the day, really harsh on people's faces. So you have to keep in mind where the sun is coming from. And if they're, you know, fair skinned and the sun's hitting them, they're going to overexpose on this side of their face and be dark and a little blue on this side. And that can work depending on the photograph. Uh, one of the ways I found to get away from this, actually, if we back up, uh, with Elliot here, I had him, it was a kind of an overcast day, but I had him in the shade. And if you have somebody in the shade, that'll overexpose the background just a little bit, and it'll make the lighting on their face really evenly. I actually, for portraits, uh, if you're taking pictures of, you know, family or friends or yourself on the farm for your marketing photos or to tell the story, I really like overcast days. It has a really soft light. It softens the lines on people's faces and uh, makes for a good photo. Uh, so that's me. That's another perspective. This guy chased me out of the pasture because he didn't like things that were shorter. Uh, but I got down like this <laughs> and took, the, took a picture. And <clears throat> uh, all the links and references that I make today uh, will be up on the farmmarketingsolutions.com website. Um, I have, it's on your handout. I wrote down the, I made a specific post. Um, one thing I wanted to run by all of you guys is I love the photos that I got in. Uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, if it's all right with you, I'd like to put a lot of them up on that page. And um, what I've done, and we're going to go into now, is I've uploaded them onto my computer and edited them a little bit so I can show you the before and after. So even if we don't get to it today, uh, we can still, you know, you'll still see it online. I'm just trying to get the, the most out of this for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so once you take all these million photographs, uh, you have to keep them organized, otherwise you will drive yourself bananas. Uh, and what I used to do, I'll pull that up full screen, is just I created folders and would say, um, you know, this is for a specific project. These are farm photos. These are pictures of cows. This is pictures of that. And that's really simple, cheap, free way to do it. If you think of having a file cabinet and you printed the photos, it's just all digital and you put them into that. Uh, I got a little bit more advanced as time went on and broken down to year. Um, but as you see, I take a lot of photographs and also bananas. Uh, if you're a Mac user, iPhoto helps you organize things really easily. Uh, if you're a PC user, you can, I'm a big Google fan, uh, download Picasa, which is another free, they do very basic editing uh, and basic file structure and sharing and there's a lot of things you can do with that. Uh, we don't have time to go into every program. Uh, I wanted to highlight one of the programs that I use. Uh, I'm, at this point, I, I couldn't live without it. Uh, it does, I'm sure, more than what I do with it. Um, but for what I need on the farm to get things done quickly uh, and efficiently and keep it organized, it's, it's second to none. And that's Adobe Lightroom. So when I want to, I, I take the pictures with my camera. It comes on an SD card. I put the SD card in my computer. And then I just, this is my, the home screen that you'll see every time that you sign in. I click on import, and you'll see the, the pictures come up here. These are the photos that I got yesterday as I was driving here. It took me about four and a half hours to get here. Uh, so as I was driving, you guys were busy. <coughs> um, so they're automatically all checked. I just click import, and it brings them into my library. Uh, and the wonderful thing about that these were already on my computer, so they're just right into my Windows C general hard drive. <clears throat> if you're bringing them in off an external source, like the camera, 
um, you can put it in and click two buttons and it automatically sorts everything by date. So you can scroll down the folders and you can see actually right here that everything is automatically sorted by date. I can see how many photos are in each one. Um, and there's general editing stuff. And this? Oh yeah, so now that um, the photos are actually in here, I click on develop, which is in the top right. And we'll, we'll choose a photo. <clears throat> and now develop opens up this whole side. It's just all sliders. You don't have to know a million things. Photoshop it can get really complicated. That's better for generating graphics as opposed to organizing and editing photographs. For organizing and editing photographs, you would use a program like this. Again, iPhoto, Picasa. I use Lightroom. Can't live without it. It's just all sliders. And I'll, I'll run through a few of them so you can see. <clears throat> Uh, if I want to crop it, it automatically adds in those rule of thirds. Uh, whoever took this one, look at you right on the intersection with your point of interest, this big white furry bird. <coughs> um, <coughs> so I actually won't crop that. Uh, the temperature, you know, you can make it warmer, darker. Um, so what I do when I get a photograph, I have a general look that I like that makes things a little bit better. Um, what I do is just add in a little bit of warmth. Um, people in general will respond better to warmer pictures. Um, makes them a little more open, personable. <clears throat> One of the things with cell phone cameras or automatic settings on your, your camera can tend to overexpose things a little bit and you lose some of the detail. And what this program does is let you do recovery. And you'll see if you watch the feathers in particular, some of that detail comes back in, uh, if that's you know what you're going for. Um, again, you could make it black and white real easy by taking out the saturation, make it super saturated. Um, like I said in the beginning, photography is an art, and it's all what you want to do with it. <clears throat> but just sliding up and down these, it's all sliders. Real super simple to use. Uh, tonal curve is a little bit more advanced. Um, in general, this line always starts straight, and you can get into reading you know, the histogram up here and the, the, what the colors mean, and that's a whole another layer of photography that, again, not a basic workshop course. But <clears throat> I take the straight line, and I bring the darks down a little bit and the lights up a little bit, so you have more of a happy S-curve. You can see the, our straight line was right here. And what that does is bring the darks down, makes them a little more saturated, brings the brights up a little bit, it ups the contrast. And from our original photo, we're starting to see a little bit more depth, uh, a little bit more clarity. Uh, the last thing, uh, this photo doesn't really need it, but you've seen on old timey photographs, it has a vignette, a little darkness around the side. Uh, it's got a, even got a slider for that. You know, if you really wanted to pull focus to the center, you can add that light or dark. <clears throat> the wonderful thing about this, as opposed to Photoshop, is that all these edits I'm making are just saved as you know, digital edits. They're not saved. I'm not manipulating the photograph at all. So that file is still fine. Uh, it's, you know, nothing's happened to it. If I wanted to... <coughs> no, when I close out of this, it saves it. And what you do, <clears throat> once we have the photograph that we like, I go back to our library and just click export and it brings up this and you'll export uh, or just save, uh, just another word for export, uh, a different copy of that photograph. So you'll have the original in case you ever want to mess it again, mess with it again and you can save the edited copy and this is, you know, you'll, you might be overwhelmed because I'm throwing a lot at you right now but you click export and these are all simple walkthrough uh, and I'll, I'll put up some videos on my website if you want more further information but <clears throat> Adobe also puts up uh, a lot of tutorial videos and makes it really simple to use. Uh, so getting into some of the photographs that you guys had. Uh, and starting with a before and after. Uh, so this one, really like this photograph. Again, all the photographs you sent in, 
Um, a lot of them I didn't have to do much, or I did a little extra because I figured, hey, why the heck not? <clears throat> uh, with this one, watching horizons, this was on a couple people's. This was, again, framing, uh, tilting your camera just a little bit. And those simple edits that I did um, before on the, the one with the chicken, I just added it in here. And you'll see side by side that I brought it up so you had one straight line. You always kind of want to look for one straight line. Makes the, it anchors the photograph a little bit. Um, that changes the perspective of the sleigh. You know, you're not falling out as much. I changed the, made, gave it a little bit of sepia tone, made it a little bit warmer. It kind of looks like that classic agrarian wonderful farm. I mean, it could be 50 years ago. It could be last weekend. Um, so I went to uh, the develop settings, mm -hmm. which is in the upper right, oh, yeah. and I was on there. And right here, mm -hmm. crop overlay. Mm -hmm. um, this is for changing red eye really simply. It just you click on their eye and it turns not red. Uh, for cropping, it's this right here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you click on that. It gives you your, your cursors, and you can change it like that. And as you're turning it, you'll see those lines show up. That gives you a point of reference for where straight is. Uh, with this photograph, you'll see what I was talking about with the sunlight um, makes that, that harsh shadow. I, th I feel like it works in this photograph. <clears throat> Just framing, it depends on where you want the interest. I, you know, I don't know the story that you want to tell if it was the multi-generations of farming and you know, passing the torch, and she's on the tractor now, and she's looking out over the farm. <clears throat> um, but cropping the picture in to make the interest just here, uh, warming it up just a little bit. Uh, the colors were pretty saturated already. Um, sunlight tends to be a little bit blue, so you're going to want to change towards um, a little bit warmer of a, a picture. That's something, you know, a setting you could change in your camera to accommodate for that the blue white balance, or just do it and, you know, after. Uh, and just cropping it in and so yeah. Email them back to me now that you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, if uh, well, I don't I don't know if I want to open that can of worms. I got 38 photos. I'll put them up. I'll put them up on the internet. Um, yeah, I'll put them up online and I'll make it available so you can right click them and download it if you want. And I, I won't put the I when you are exporting photos, a bunch of photos at the same time. Uh, because people steal other people's photographs uh, a lot. Uh, this <laughs> they, I put um, a watermark on the bottom that says my website, whether it's foodcyclist.com, which is my farm, uh, or Farm Marketing Solutions, uh, which is you know my business website. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I found my pictures elsewhere. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I don't make my money off the photography, um, so the photos are free to use if that name is on the bottom. You can use it wherever you want because it has a way to link back to my site. And then in, in the um, when you go to export, so we have a, a photograph that we like. We go to library um, <clears throat> and you click export. Yes. Why is this not? Oh, it's um, I don't know why it's not showing it. So you must have a way of making it so that somebody cannot right click on it and then just copy it. Yeah, and um, so what is what that this? Fair? Um, no, that's that's a different line of coding. I'll 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 do both uh, right now. Uh, right, it's not working for me right now. I don't know why. <clears throat> but you scroll down and you can pre-save watermarks, and it'll show up. You know whatever your farm's name is with a little C at the bottom. Uh, on every photo, and you can change the size, the shape, the color, the transparency of that. And you only have to do that once, and as you're exporting all your photos, you can click on 20 photos and export them to a certain size and certain shape for internet or for print, and just click on watermark and it's already there. Uh, as far as not being able to right click on it, that's a web coding thing. Um, if you're not your own webmaster, you would have to talk to your webmaster that. It's a simple line of JavaScript code that they can put on your website that disables the right click. Um, <clears throat> and that's so they can't download anything from your, uh, your website. 
Uh, so I, edit, I went through a bunch of them. I'll show you some of the, the side-by-sides here. Oh, um, not showing up quite the way. <clears throat> so there was, I got a picture of a goose, and it was a really good shot. Uh, some of the things that I would change if you had to um, mess with it is having a, short, a smaller aperture, so you have a smaller depth of field. Um, <clears throat> where the goose is in focus and a lot of this is more out of focus. Um, if you're using photographs online, I added in some text because that stuff really hits a note with people and they'll share it on Facebook and Instagram. It's just a, a simple way you know, to add it in a joke or a, or a quote. <clears throat> um, there's the original. You know, I just added a little bit of contrast, a little bit of vibrancy. You can see the grass is a little greener. The goose stands out a little bit more. Uh, and then some goofy text. Um, <clears throat> as you're taking landscape photos of the farm, uh, you can think of that for using for your website header uh, or your Facebook header really easily, where the original picture was beautiful fall colors, the cow sitting there. Um, you can see our horizon is just that a little bit. Um, I took it when I was laying on the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, which it's really tough to see. I always edit mine a little bit and you, you can touch them a little bit with the lines on the screen in uh, Adobe Lightroom. <clears throat> and then just adding in some text, um, which can be done on the computer uh, through Photoshop or through just your basic editor or just having this on Facebook um, and thinking of how you can use those photos if it's not just a square photo of a flower, if it's a long range photo, there's a lot of banners and things online that you can use now. <clears throat> or in print at the top of an article, they'll put that and then your article underneath it. Uh, I was talking before about having a group of people or a situation going on and having one sp particular instance and keeping in mind how you represent your farm. Uh, up here, you got a little bit of dirt, a little bit of rust. Um, down here, it's just some dead space with the table. Uh, you don't know if that's like a granite countertop or you didn't clean. <laughs> uh, 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 no offense on any of this, by the way. <clears throat> but just cropping it, the top and the bottom, it becomes less uh, room. You're like, what, what is this cinder block room? And more, what is he up to uh, doing that? So it's creating that interest, really focusing on, on what you're up to. Uh, again, uh, a group of people, you have some, um, when you have a lot of contrast between light and dark, um, that's where your focus will pull. And when I see this photograph, my eyes go here automatically. So I, I cut that out, uh, put it in a little, you know, desaturate it a little bit, put it in sepia. It was just, I, you know, I got 40 of these in the last day. So it was just like bam, 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 next, bam, 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 next. Um, but add, you know, adding a little bit of interest kind of makes it a fun photograph. And it's all, it's all subjective. It's all you know, what you see in your mind's eye and the story that you want to portray. <clears throat> this is a group of people doing a soil sample. And I look at this guy automatically. It looks like my friend Ryan. Uh, I cut him out. And all, you know, I go to the white bucket. And you, you're talking about soil samples. It's their hands working in the bucket now instead of him watching their hands working in the bucket. Uh, so that's just framing as you're standing there seeing how you can cut people out. You know, if you took one step closer uh, here, you'd get them out of the, you'd get him out of the picture and more focus pulled on, on right there. Um, oh, there was this one. I put in a Tom Vilsack quote. Uh, it was another adding in a little bit of text because this stuff tends to go viral. You have a lot of space here and space here. Your, my, where I want to focus on is the farm right here. So creating a story with that photograph that you find a quote, something brief, that can be shared with other people and conveys a message, uh, and using your photograph to do that. <clears throat> um, these are really popular. There's like half a dozen people on Facebook that do something like this. Um, George Takei, um, there's a I Love Science thing. Um, uh, farmers, it's like Farmer's Helper or something. <clears throat> but has a lot of photographs where they'll have pictures of regrowing um, food like celery or pineapple and they have a couple different photos with a little bit of text and that stuff you get a message across. Uh, people find themselves to be very important nowadays and they have a lot of things to do like 
spend time scrolling down on Facebook. And if you don't get that message out in four seconds, uh, you might miss that opportunity. Uh, so this is a good way that I found to do that. Um, with my farm website and the blog that we had when we rode our bikes across country and farmed on as apprentices last year and starting the farm this year, I choose the format of having photographs with small captions underneath them. And that's really easy to do in WordPress. I just upload the photo, write a quick caption. And I found I had two different audience members. People who would scroll through all the photos, I would do 10, 15 at a shot. Uh, and get my story that way and they would say oh I saw all the work that you're doing on the farm and you're doing this and you're doing that and I'm like but what about this and I'm like that was in the caption I never read the captions I just scroll through all the photos and some people who scrolled through the photos and read the captions and then asked for more uh, so I hit both audiences people who are looking at my site really quickly and people who are spending more time with it uh, with the photographs you know that picture is worth a thousand words and I do a lot of video as well um, but when you're reaching farmers with your information, uh, if you're a farmer yourself, a lot of, of people are a little bit more rural and the download times on videos can be a little tough. Um, so with video, I recommend saying it in two minutes or less uh, because they can't download it or they'll lose attention. And with photographs, make it interesting and hit them in the face and then walk away. <laughs> um, I've worked in the media for the last four and a half years and I shoot a lot of video as well. Uh -huh. with the WordPress website, yeah. That easily uploaded is that a for video? Yeah, is it very compatible? What you should do, or what I do, and is the best, um, is the be everywhere strategy. Put your videos up on YouTube, and then embed the YouTube videos on WordPress. You're not then doing any of the file hosting, so you're not counting on your servers to be quick, um, and people can find you on the second largest search engine, yeah, which is YouTube, know. which is um, partnered with Google now. Um, so you want to be as many places as you can to have people find you. So having that website connected, or the video connected to you, or that picture connected to you on your website, then also having it on Facebook or Flickr, or um, there's a very um, small um, range of social media that I think farmers really get use out of, and that's uh, Facebook. People are turning away from Twitter. Uh, don't waste your time with it. Uh, Facebook is really good for photographs, and that's where a lot of your core demographic is, uh, and Pinterest. Uh, moms are buying food for their kids. Uh, I have a wife who buys food for their kids, uh, and they love Pinterest. Uh, I know people who are not on Facebook and not on any other social media and are on Pinterest, and that's photocentric, and that's really easy. You sign up for an account, <clears throat> and you go to the photographs on your own website, and you click pin, and it's really simple. There's videos to explain that. So with, with here, again, my, my focus is pulled up here. I use that recovery slider because this is a bright sunlight day. It was a little bit overexposed. I imagine this was automatic settings. I got cropped down here to get rid of you know, this, uh, this focus puller right here. Added in the recovery so I got a little bit more detail in the rivets here. <clears throat> Brought it in on the side to bring our, our focus. If I was to split it in thirds right in the middle of the tractor, it's those two eyes staring at me. Uh, and there we are making hay. Uh, also desaturated a little bit, made a little more old-timey photo. It's, you know, a farmer with a hat and looks good and people have that picture of farming uh, in their heads. <coughs> um. There you go. Oh, this one I didn't do that much because um, it was awesome. <laughs> Uh, a lot of these are really good. I just, this is the after, this is before. You can see it's uh, washed a little bit just because you're taking it from a little further back um, and there might be some dust in the air. <clears throat> so with that, the line, the curve, histogram, the histogram curve, I just brought those darks down, brought the lights up real quick in Lightroom uh, and you can see the difference in the photo. Uh, also got rid of some of the dead space because I'm not interested in the dirt, I'm interested in the people working. And if we split it in the thirds here, uh, you would, we would fall right on that tractor. Oh, it's also, if you just click on the photo, you can zoom in real easy. I'm just clicking, left clicking right now. <clears throat> but you see our lines 
are in that third, and it kind of makes it more of a dynamic shot as opposed to the tractor right in the middle with the people starting to come off the, the screen. <clears throat> Adds a little bit of motion. Um, this one I liked in particular. Let me go back to library. Uh, for one reason, just because I have um, farm marketing solutions, and um, I was wearing it yesterday. The thing that I noticed with this picture is Cornell. You know, if you're around your farm, <clears throat> uh, I had t-shirts made around my farm, and um, for pictures, this has to do with pictures. You're gonna, people are going to take pictures of you if you have people visiting. If you're going out in the public, people are going to take pictures. You're going to be take pictures of yourself doing the you know, arm length. Have your farm name, your logo. Use pictures. Um, even if you don't have your, your watermark that says, you know, Food Cyclist Farm or um, in New, York, in New York Farm or whatever, have something in the picture that says your farm's name. And that's another way for people to find you and to track the photos if it, you know, if it goes up on an ag website or if you put it up on a social media and somebody shares it, they'll see that it's your farm or your organization or your company. Uh, I think that's really important, really beneficial. And the only thing I did with this, um, it's really blue from the sunlight, so I warmed it up. I cut out some of the back of the truck, because um, you can tell that it's a truck gate right here, and that we're, they're working together. I left a lot of the sky, because you get a lot of, you know, it's a big open space. Uh, they're out in the field working. Um, <clears throat> that was a good, a good photo. Um, some of these we, we saw. Um, and we'll, just two minutes. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm running out of, of photos specifically, but if you have any other, any other questions, you want me to find a few more. We have two minutes left. Uh, I want to thank you for sending in the photographs. Uh, like I said, I'll put them up online. Uh, I had a blast getting in all this stuff from people and seeing you know, how you tell your story through photography and uh, how you can tweak it just a little bit to make it better and I feel like <clears throat> there was no bad picture sent to me um, because you all took the photographs and that's the first step is taking them and putting them somewhere so you have them. Uh, even if it's in the middle of summer and everything's, are be everything's beautiful and you're running around like crazy, snap a few photos and save them for the winter and you can create new brochures, you can pu publish an article if you have a CSA. It's hard for me to sell chickens right now because my chickens are being delivered next week but I have pictures from last year that I'm using and people are like, oh, that's wonderful, a chicken, ha <laughs> and then they sign up. Um, so the, the only thing I can stress, whether you use Lightroom or another program, is to take the photos and um, just framing, lighting, and interest. Have you done any upgrades? Were you on Lightroom 2 and now you've upgraded to 3? No, I was just on 3. Um, I got it a year or two ago, and I've just been like giddy since. <laughs> um, I think they have four out now. Yeah, it hasn't changed much. All right, and uh, it hasn't changed much. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been happy with it. I don't. It gets further into detail um, with what you can do. It's really a powerful tool, and you can get really intricate. Yeah. But I do general oversweeping editing, and that gets me where I want to be really quickly. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. So, thank you.